Hey everybody, Michael B. The Game Genie here. For those of you who've been following me for the last little while, you know I've been working on a special little project where I'm trying to build a home arcade in my house. I picked out an area and made it special. So today we're going to be taking a look at that area. And I gotta try to steal this from another channel that I love. You know, I used to think that having an arcade in my house was impossible, but thanks to Arcade 1UP and the reasonably priced build-it-yourself arcade cabinets, it seems nothing is impossible. Hey guys! We are in the basement! <laughs> That's a shout out to one of my favorite YouTube video producers, John's Arcade. I've been watching a lot of his stuff lately. So guys, this is it. Finally, my basement arcade room tour. And thankfully, due to Arcade 1UP releasing these cabinets, I now have an arcade in my basement. How about that? So let's go over a couple things that I have added to make the basement arcade a little bit more interesting, make it feel like an actual arcade. So the first thing I want to talk about is the actual arcade cabinets. As most of you know, I've been buying and collecting Arcade 1UP cabinets this past year. I got started uh, almost two years ago now when I bought my first one ever, Street Fighter, which you can see third one down in the row. And since then, it's kind of taken on a life of its own. This is what I call Fighter's Row. You can see I have Marvel Super Heroes. That's brand new. I just got that last week. There's a funny story about that I'll tell you in a minute. Mortal Kombat, which is probably my most used fighting cabinet. And I don't even play against the computer or play against anybody else. I basically just turn on Mortal Kombat 2 and practice fatalities all the time. Street Fighter, again, like I said, started it all. And due to space restrictions, I moved Final Fight into this row as well. For some reason, I felt like it fit. Marvel Super Heroes also has a beat-em-up on it. Final Fight's a fantastic cabinet. For those of you that don't know, Final Fight not only has Final Fight on it, but it also has 1944 The Loop Master, which is an amazing vertical scrolling shooter, shoot 'em up game. I love it. It also has Ghosts and Goblins, which is harder than the NES game somehow. Just imagine like being used to playing it on the NES game and being used to those controls and switching over to try to play it on the arcade. But it's actually a really cool and rare arcade game, so it's cool that I have it on this cabinet. And Strider, which I thought I'd play a lot more, but I ended up not actually playing hardly at all. I mainly play the other three games the most on this cabinet. Anyways, if you're going to get one arcade one up, and you're in the U.S., this one's regularly $1.99 on sale. Uh, it was part of that big $50 sale that went on this past year. Final Fight is definitely one of my most recommended cabs. There's a lot of versatility on this cab, a lot of things to go back to. Final Fight's a great option. Like I just mentioned, Marvel Super Heroes is one of my newest cabinets. It's one, actually, I didn't even intend to pick up. It's kind of a funny story. I uh, This is the... A cabinet I've bought twice now, actually. Uh, the first, and it's the exact same cabinet, which is the funny thing. See, you can't buy these cabinets here locally. Normally, you would have to order them in to purchase them. However, someone pre-ordered this one from EB Games here locally and then never picked it up, so they put it back out to sell. And it's like the only cabinet I didn't have that's available here locally, other than there's a bunch of Street Fighters at one Walmart that they're trying to sell off. So... One day on an impulse buy, I went down and bought it and ended up bringing it back because I was afraid I would get divorced. And, you know, I always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to get it, but I kind of wanted to get the limited edition because it had the lit marquee. It's just, unfortunately, uh, it wasn't available here from the brick, which still has it in Canada. And they won't ship to Newfoundland, and I don't know when the store is going to open. So, uh, you know, I kind of had it on the back burner. But recently, I did some work for my sister-in-law. Of course, I did it as a favor, but when I was done, she paid me enough that I could basically just go add this. So, impulse buy number two, I went and got it, and I'm super glad I did. Punisher is a fantastic game, and actually, Marvel Super Heroes is a great beat em up. I've been having a lot of fun with this cabinet. Now, this side of the room is where I guess I'm going to put my classic arcade games. So, first and foremost, we have what really changed my whole opinion on getting these arcade one ups. Star Wars. Originally when I started buying these, I wanted to get the ones that really meant something to me growing up. 
So like I played a ton of Street Fighter at home and always went and watched other people play in the arcades. Mortal Kombat was the same way. Mortal Kombat 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, actually. It, I put so much time in Mortal Kombat 2. They were must-haves. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles down there is another one. That was probably my number one arcade game I wanted to have at home. But Star Wars just intrigued me. I think it was the lit marquee, the shape of the cabinet. Everything just seemed so interesting. But I didn't know if I would like it or not. Because the game is actually pretty simplistic and the vector graphics. I, You know, I'm a 90s arcade kid. So I didn't know if it would really resonate with me. And then I watched a bunch of reviews. I watched Cool Toy do a review on it. I watched Games 81 do a review on it. And they talked about how much they liked it. How cool it was. I'm a big Star Wars fan. So I couldn't resist. I ordered it when the quarantine first started. It showed up and the cab is absolutely beautiful. And I started playing it and I started having a really great time. Like the gameplay is just excellent. I don't even touch anything else. I haven't really even got into Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi yet. I just play the original Star Wars and there's hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of fun involved with it. I've actually been having a fun back and forth competition with uh, retro nonsense Duke Williams on Twitter we've been going back and forth throughout the entire quarantine trading top scores and I thought I had them for the last longest last little while because I had a massive score of 1,437,000 and that included the first three tower bonuses the two death stare runs with full bonuses and really good scores on all the TIE fighter sections and I was like he'll never beat that but he just came back and killed me with a 1.6 million score so uh, I've been a little distracted because I've got a couple new arcade one-ups, but I'm coming for you, Duke Williams. Don't you worry about it, my friend. Retro nonsense, you are still going down. This isn't over. Further on down the row, you will see my newest edition, which is the 48th anniversary Pac-Man cabinet. This is one when I first saw it, I didn't think I was going to buy. I've been very vocal about I like my arcade cabinets to look as much like the original as possible and I wasn't 100% sold on the wood grain on the side panels. But uh, I started playing Star Wars and realized how much I enjoyed the more vintage arcade games and you know I've watched King of Kong a million times, seeing people go back and talking about classic scores, watching movies like Pixels where, you know, they play Pokemon and Galaga's featured. And this cabinet had both Pac-Man and Galaga on the same cabinet. And I couldn't resist. And I picked it up. And I'm so glad I did. I'm having a blast playing Pac-Man. I'm having a blast playing Galaga. And there's seven games on this. There's five other Pac-Man games. I haven't even got into them yet. But very excited to do that. Last but not least, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I have actually done a full review on this. I've talked about this in length when I did my arcade one up. I think I have a problem video, so I'm not going to say much. This is the one that really turned the tide for me. Street Fighter was okay, but Turtles was excellent. And it was a dream to have it in my home. And after getting this and enjoying it so much, I knew I was going to buy more cabinets. I didn't think it would turn into what it's turned into, but yeah, Turtles, I blame you. <laughs> So on the other side of the room, not as exciting. Well, maybe for some. This is my area designated for kind of retro gaming now. I was in a much bigger room before, but it didn't make sense. The arcade cabinets were stuck up against movies we had in storage. And uh, they were kind of in the way. And this was a storage room, and I decided to make use of this and try to give back some of the basement to my wife. So I moved my retro gaming area into this other side of this basement storage room where I put the arcades and moved everything out into the other room. So yeah, this is my retro gaming area now. You can see I've got basically everything that I'm currently playing that I don't play through some kind of mini console here in this room. Uh, there's my studio lights that I use for videos sometimes. And there's my TV set up with all my mini consoles, except the PlayStation Classic, which I don't use very much, attached. So I'll let me take you over there. So guys, here is my retro gaming setup right now. It's a bit of a mess down there. I could definitely use some cord management, but I have my NES Classic. That's the stock one that's not modded. My SNES Classic, stock one not modded. I have an extra one of each that's modded. My newest edition, the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, which is excellent. And then right next to it, you will see the Sega Genesis uh, Classic, or is it just the Sega Genesis Mini? I can't remember with those, but yeah, they're all there. 
Also there, you can see Evil Emulation <laughs> Raspberry Pi Machine. And that's how I play a bunch of other stuff. And that's how I play some stuff through MAME, too. And I've got my old... This used to be my actual TV for modern gaming a couple of years ago until I switched to 4K. So this is a Samsung 55-inch LED TV, and it does a pretty good job. But with the Raspberry Pi specifically, and some of the older uh, the rec mini consoles as well, I have to go in and change the settings a little bit because it'll go dark in certain areas like blazing lasers i notice a lot you go to an area where it's just stars in the background and everything gets darker michael jackson's moonwalker is another game where it does that so i've got to change the settings i've got it adjusted now and everything seems to be working pretty well and the last thing we have in this room is air hockey <laughs> this is just a junky air hockey table that uh, me and my wife bought actually when we first got together over 15 years ago so we bought this at walmart i think it was like 50 to 100 bucks and anyways we used it a bunch but it was up to my parents house and when we moved out into our first apartment which was relatively small we just didn't have room for it so it's been in storage so the other day i went up looking for a couple things and my dad said are you ever going to take that air hockey table and i was like hmm I've got a room for an air hockey table now, so here it is. Uh, I've been trying to play with my wife. She doesn't have a lot of time to come down here, but I've had my daughter down. I've been trying to teach her, and that hasn't been going so well. <laughs> so guys, those are the cabinets that I have in my area, and also my retro gaming setup. But let me show you some of the other little fine details, which kind of bring this area to life and make it feel more and more like an actual arcade because I'm not just going for having a bunch of arcade cabinets. I wanted to recreate the experience of walking into a classic 80s slash 90s arcade. So I added a couple other things that weren't relatively expensive and it really gives that room an extra je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it gives that room the special feeling. It makes it feel like the dank and dingy low lit arcade that I remember growing up. So guys, if you take a look right over my shoulder here, you'll notice a basic generic ceiling light. Well, not really. When this was still a storage room, this is one of the first things that I actually modified. I came in here and there was a ceiling fan up there. It was brutal. I put some LED lights in there, but the light in the room was just not very good. So one day I'm at Costco and I find this product called a smart light. So anyways, I looked at it and I said, that might be really cool for the game room. But of course, I've never bought anything like that. I wasn't even thinking at the time, I just went home. But I went home and I thought more and more about it and I was like, you know what? This could be something, this could be something that's really cool. So I ended up purchasing this smart light and replacing the ceiling fan that was there. I liked it so much, I actually did it on the other side of the room too because there's actually two sections of room here. So let me show you about this light. First thing I like about it is most of these uh, pre-made ceiling lights have what's called bright white, which is this yellowish light that I don't really like. I've always preferred the daylight uh, kind of really, really white setting and it allows me to do that. In fact, it allows me to remote control. So I'm currently in my phone on the feature and you'll see this is the color I usually have it at. Boom. Oh, I gotta change the other side of the room too, so. The other side of the room doesn't look so bad. Ooh. Well, I got my studio lighting, so you probably can't tell. Anyways, back to this one. So right now, I have it set to blue. The cool thing about that is when it's just this light on, the room's kind of dark and it gives it that blue atmosphere, but it almost kind of works like a black light. Uh, let me turn off a couple other things and show you what I mean. So I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but if you take a look, I just have the blue light on now. And I've turned off all the other lights, and you can kind of see the green pinstriping around the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cab. It's actually like neon right now. And that's what the blue light overhead kind of does. And if you go over here, same thing with the when the TV's not going crazy on it. The Marvel Superhero Cab, those green buttons kind of like blow up. So the blue light up there actually kind of acts like a black light. And as you can see, this has some horrible, horrible carpet that I have cleaned mercilessly and is going to have to go. So I'm currently debating right now. I've looked at options for kind of like laminate hardwood flooring that I might put in here. But if I can find it, I'm really going to go with black light carpeting. 
And that blue light at that time will make that look amazing. So outside of it just being blue, you can also change the colors. Uh, I don't know if I really want to get into that now. It gives you the option to change the colors. You have a different color palette there you can go through. I have it set to a very specific blue and it's accurate on both sides of the room so I don't really want to change it. But I can move over to scene. And you can take a look there. It'll flash through a number of colors. That's the flash setting. There's the pulse. I'm not really in love with the pulse one. The pulse one's really cool. But it'll actually pulse to white and you can kind of do your own. Like I have one set up here, Arcade 1 and it just goes back and forth blue and pinkish purple because to me those are the two big arcade colors. I don't know. Anyways, I love this light. That was the first thing I did and I'll go back to the blue. This is the color I usually have it set to all the time in here. So after I had the light in here I realized that the you know blue or black light as I like to kind of look at it didn't really look good because the room had this like peachy color. If you've been watching for a while, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, all that stuff. You'll remember this room used to have this really gross peach color. Our whole house had it when we moved in. I don't know, I guess when the guy did the house, there was some kind of sale in that paint, and the house looked terrible. So we've been going through slowly painting the rooms. My wife hates it when I paint those, so I've really got to push to really get one of these rooms painted. So I said I was going to paint this room. She wasn't happy, but it had to be done. This room just didn't look very good. So I just had to win her over, and I told her I'd go with a gray. Now, if I had my time back, because most people say arcades really have, like, dark walls, I probably would have gone with a little bit of a lighter gray. This is a very, very light gray, which sometimes can be confused as white, called tin. My wife was determined that it had to be a light color because... It's downstairs, and like downstairs are notoriously dark and dingy looking. That's what an arcade should be though, but she didn't see it that way. So I went with this color, and in retrospect, I wish I went a little bit darker, but this works in my opinion. And I mean, half the time I have the dark light on anyways, doesn't really matter. So I had the walls painted, and I kind of looked around, and it looked good, but it still seemed to be missing something. So I looked for some feedback on my Instagram, on my Twitter, asking people in the community, what really should I decorate my game room with? And it came back as a resounding big yes that everybody said, movie posters. So what did I do? Did I go out and buy movie posters? Of course not. <laughs> I'm a collector. I don't throw anything away. Well, hoarder would be a more accurate term. So, they said movie posters. I had movie posters. I just had to find them. So I came downstairs and I knew I had put some of them away. So let me show you some of the movie posters. So you guys know I'm a pretty big horror fan. So I came downstairs and one of the first posters I found was my original Nightmare on Elm Street poster, which I absolutely love. Next to Nightmare on Elm Street for the Dream Master, this is my favorite poster in the series, for sure. Uh, Dream Warriors is moving up there too, that actually might be number two now over this, but this was the one that was available. The thing about this is, this is not an official movie poster, this is a little bit smaller. So this is your uh, traditional 24 by 36, it's actually even a little bit smaller than that. Um, I bought that at the exact same time, I bought this, my original Friday the 13th movie poster. So I found both of these relatively easy, and I was excited to have these up in the room. I'm going to eventually buy frames for these. I feel like such a kid having movie posters, uh, you know, push bin to my wall. Um, I gotta buy frames. The frames are 24 by 36, and it's just a little bit too big, so I'm not sure how they're gonna look in it right now. Those are the frames that they have available at Walmart. Next to it, this has been an odd one. A lot of people commented on this. Why do you have a Jason X poster up? Well, I love Jason X, and I just had it. <laughs> Again, I paid nothing for these posters. So Jason X, when this came out, uh, we had a movie store where I lived in Paradise, and uh, I got a bunch of the movie posters there. So all of the movie posters, because I still got a bunch of them here in my closet, this is the one that spoke the most to me. It was either this or Valentine with David Boreanaz, and I decided to go with Jason X. You take a look at the other side of the room, same thing as Jason X, Bubba Hotep, came out roughly around the same time. I'm a huge Bruce Campbell fan. I love this movie, so this was absolutely going up. 
like Jason X, this is a real movie poster, so these are actually much bigger than original poster. I went out to buy frames for all of these, but again, like I said, they're only 24 by 36, and this one's actually just a little bit bigger. They're 27 by, I can't remember the length now, so I haven't been able to find posters yet. Anyways, Bubba Hotep's an awesome movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. One of Bruce Campbell's best. Next up is my favorite Bruce Campbell movie and my favorite Evil Dead movie. I know some people will disagree with this. This one started my love affair of Bruce Campbell as an actor. Army of Darkness, one of my favorite movies of all time, and I absolutely had to have the poster. This one, I couldn't find. I was so furious because I just couldn't find it, but luckily I went up to my parents where the honey hole where I find all my old toys and collectibles, and sure enough, there were two posters there, and the one I wanted the absolute most was my Back to the Future poster. Oh man, was I so glad this was still up there. This is my only non-horror movie movie poster that I have up in this room right now. Again, it's just a little bit too big for the frames, so I gotta go see if I can get a specially frame for these. I'd like to get all my movie posters done. So, I added six really cool movie posters to the room, and I didn't spend a cent because... I just had them in storage because I'm a pack rat hoarder and I can't let anything go. So the next thing I saw in a lot of other people's arcade basement rooms or arcade game rooms was they had these LED strip lights around the ceilings, around the baseboards, and I absolutely had to go get some. So I went to Amazon and I ordered 32 feet thinking that would be massively, massively, massively long. And I was massively, massively, massively wrong. Probably should have measured the room first. So, here they are. I really like them. Uh, this is from Amazon, the GoV 32 foot package. And as you can see, uh, not quite as long as I thought. Like, I didn't measure, and for some reason, I thought it would go right around the room. I even thought I'd have room to go down on these sides, but that's just not how it worked out. Also, I didn't really, I don't like how these are really put together because this is not actually 32 feet of light. This is two 16 inch strips. And you can see right here, this is where they kind of connect and they go into the same power plug. And right here behind the curtain, you can see that's the changer and that's the one power plug for both. I originally started over here with them because I had no idea. Again, I didn't measure because I'm dumb. So I actually started over there and then realized I wouldn't have enough room to go back there to connect at that starter strip. So I had to tear it off the wall, which I then was terrified that I ruined the strip, but managed to get it to work. That's where it connected. And I got all the way to the other wall and I only had to cut off a very, very, very small amount. So yeah, it does this room, but certainly if you come back over here, I would have loved if it done the full rectangle of the room and eventually I'm gonna to have to do this side of the room as well so I'm gonna to have to buy another 32 feet and then I don't know how I'm gonna be able to sync the color change because I don't like leaving them one consistent color right now I like them on this pattern that they're on so yeah I've got some figuring out to do but very excited to have these in my room they kind of made this light a little unnecessary and let me just show you why let me turn off the lights and well I got my studio lighting on so that kind of kills it but honestly even with just that light on that's enough light to light up the room and it's so bright that it actually takes away from the blue light effect at times so <laughs> in retrospect I probably didn't need to get that light up there but it's still pretty cool and it still adds to the aesthetic of the room so at that point, I figured I had enough lighting, enough ambience, but of course, when you start to go down a rabbit hole, <laughs> it's hard to claw your way out again. So of course, I had my neon light strips done, I had my lighting done, I had my arcade cabinets, uh, but I really wanted some neon signs on the wall. I was looking at stuff on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, all that stuff, and everything seemed really, really, really super expensive. So, on Amazon, I found one thing, and I thought this would be the only, like, LED lighted sign I would have in this room. <laughs> it's the start of it, anyways. Let me show you. So, guys, the cheapest option I could find in something that I thought would make sense for the arcade room 
was an open sign. This was on Amazon.ca for $24.99, and it had $6 shipping, so $31 Canadian, so about $0.48 cents American. Anyways, I am really, really impressed with that. When I first turned it on and looked at it, I didn't think it was all that special. But then I found the other switch, which made the blue around the open start to rotate. And yeah, this has became one of my favorite signs I have up in my room. I absolutely love it. Love my open sign. One of the coolest things that I have here. If you'll head over here, I mean, what arcade room? And honestly, I'm, I apologize, but really the camera doesn't do it justice. But what arcade room isn't complete without a beer sign? For those of you in Canada, you might be familiar with this brand, Alpine. It's under the Moosehead label. I was very excited to be able to get one of these signs. It is absolutely beautiful, and I'm so excited to have it in my game room. Now, as for new additions, I was out at Walmart today picking up these lovely curtains because there was a giant window here which made all the lights and ambience really unexciting in the daytime. So I went out and bought, they're not blackout, but the room darkening curtains and they do a really good job. While I was there, I came across this little number. <laughs> and it's such a stupid thing, but it was dirt cheap. It was only like 20 bucks and it's another neon sign. It's just a little, ra a little cloud with a rainbow going through it. I figured I'd take it home. If it looks stupid in the arcade, worst case scenario, it'd look great in my daughter's room, but Hey, I kind of dig it. My wife loves it. She says it sends a really good message. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I think it's a cool little sign for my arcade room. And uh, just, you know, more neon. I didn't need it, but it was cheap. And just one second, I'm going to turn off the lights and show you the last thing here that I added today. So guys, just another look again with all the lights out, what everything looks like. There's my Alpine beer sign. Here's my open sign, cute little rainbow sign. Man, that really puts out a little light for a dirt cheap little neon light. That is pretty dandy. Last but not least, every arcade needs their own marquee sign. I've looked at possibly spending some money to get one done, but then I came across this in Walmart today and I couldn't resist. This is a little $10 item. Uh, basically, it's an LED light sign and uh, comes with some wax markers so my wife uh, you know was kind enough to do a little bit of art and now I have Michael B's Arcade lighted wall art and you know what it's got little tiny batteries in it I don't have it on all the time but that is pretty neat for about 10 bucks Michael B's Arcade so guys I hope you enjoyed this little look at my home arcade project I'm mostly done on the aesthetics for this section of the room. I got a feeling that section of the room where my retro gaming stuff is set up, that's probably going to change because if I buy any more of these cabinets, I'm kind of out of space right now. So I'll probably change that side of the room and add some of the features that I added over there as well here. This will eventually probably be all arcades. I seem to have some kind of problem. I don't know. Anyways, guys, again... Hope you enjoyed this little look, and if you have any suggestions or you want to make a comment on what you think about a little arcade space, please feel free to leave me something in the comments and let me know. And anyways, guys, this is Michael B. The Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time.